Welcome to the Neuropathy Support Group and Podcast. I'm Chris, and I'm so glad you tuned in. It's my hope with this podcast to help all of us gather information that might help those that need support dealing with this debilitating issue. Before we get started, let's get the formalities out of the way with the medical and privacy disclaimer. I am not a doctor or medical professional. The information on this podcast is from personal experiences and is meant for group support. Additionally, the information discussed is not meant to diagnose, treat, or cure any underlying conditions associated with neuropathy. All names here within are private and will not be shared with any outside sources. Please consult your health care provider before making any health decisions. If you have medical concerns or an immediate emergency, please contact your doctor or dial 911. How's everyone doing out there? I hope you're having a great week. It's been pretty good over here. This week's not been so much pain for me, so it's probably the change of the weather. And we're going to have rain now coming up again on this weekend, so it's going to change. I'll probably be hurting then, but... This week, I just posted a um, an article on peripheral neuropathy, and that's what I'm going to discuss today. It's a real quick one here, um, but if you've read it, that's great. You'll understand what I'm saying. If you haven't read it, I'm, look for it, because I did post it in everyone's uh, link, in whatever group they belong to. Look, today's episode is Living with Peripheral Neuropathy. Coping Strategies, and Resources. So peripheral neuropathy can significantly impact one's quality of life, manifesting in symptoms ranging from numbness and pain to muscle weakness. Living with this condition is unique for everyone, yet a common thread ties them together, the relentless quest for relief and adaptability. Understanding effective coping strategies and tapping into supportive resources can make the challenge of living with peripheral neuropathy profoundly more manageable. This article explores seven coping strategies to help individuals cope with peripheral neuropathy. It also suggests pathways that offer support. So what is peripheral neuropathy? Peripheral neuropathy results from damage to the peripheral nerves, leading to disrupted signal transmissions. It manifests diverse symptoms such as uh, sensory changes like pain and numbness, motor impairments like muscle weakness, autonomic dysfunction, which is your blood pressure is irregular, or you have gastrointestinal issues. Causes range from metabolic disorders like diabetes, toxic exposures, infections, autoimmune diseases, and genetic issues. Targeted treatments and lifestyle adjustments are necessary to address both symptoms and underlying causes. Managing these symptoms requires a comprehensive approach. Here are some coping several coping strategies that might help. First is your medication. Pain relief or peripheral neuropathy can range from over-the-counter options like ibuprofen to prescription medications. Prescription options may include anti-seizure medications such as gabapentin, which are used to treat nerve pain. Antidepressants, particularly those in the serotonin categories can also be effective in managing pain by alternating pain perception pathways in the brain. Topical treatments include capsaicin cream or lidocaine patches. They provide localized pain relief by numbing the nerve endings at the skin's surface. A couple things I would that I could recommend to you that's happened to me is that capsaicin burns my skin. I can't put it anywhere on my body and I'll be it'll be on fire and I'll be hurting big time. It doesn't help at all because I don't give it an opportunity. The other thing is um my socks that I wear, compression socks, I get the twenty by thirty. They are the they are the most 
uh, I guess, squeezable, I guess, on your nerves to open up, you know, your nerves so you're able to walk okay. But I use those, and those have seemed to work a lot better for me. I, one thing I did improve um, on is that I don't use my cane that much anymore. Having to be, I'm able to actually walk. I still have some slowness and I'm tiredness, but in regards to pain, they feel a lot better. Here's some lifestyle changes you might want to think about. Proper nutrition is essential in managing peripheral neuropathy. If you're deficient in vitamins, especially B12 and B6, that can make the problems and symptoms worse. Supplementation under a healthcare provider's guidance can help alleviate symptoms in some cases. For me, I take B12 and I take B1 and those seem to work best for me. And I also take this next one, alpha lipoic acid, which is an antioxidant, has also shown promise in reducing pain and improving nerve function in some studies. Exercise is equally important because it improves blood flow, reduces inflammation, and can help control blood sugar levels, especially in diabetic neuropathy. Low impact exercises such as walking, swimming, or cycling are, are recommended to avoid stress on the feet and hands, where symptoms are often most pronounced. Next is avoiding toxins. Exposure to toxins, including heavy metals and certain chemicals, can worsen peripheral neuropathy. Reducing exposure and avoiding excessive alcohol consumption, which can further damage peripheral nerves, are key preventive measures. You know, I never checked with my doctor at all, but back in the day, I used to work at paint companies and um, several of them, and we were always having our hands in uh, lacquer thinner, denatured alcohol, acetone. We, we had everything paint thinner. Our hands were in it 24-7. Uh, back then, there wasn't that big of regulations on those products, so there really wasn't very many safety concerns. Also, not even just to talk about the paint itself, you know, with the lead in it and certain chemicals also. You know, you got to remember, those things are penetrating your skin and going into your body. So you really need to make sure you tell your doctor everything that you've done in your past. And, you know, those could be some of the issues. So let's talk about alternative therapies. Alternative therapies such as acupuncture can offer relief by stimulating certain points in the body which is thought to trigger the release of natural painkillers called endorphins, improve blood flow, and possibly enhance nerve function. You know, I had the opportunity to do, um, have this done on one of the cruises I was on. I don't know why I didn't take that option just to see if it was going to work. Ugh, well, while acupuncture is not universally effective, many individuals find significant symptom relief through regular sessions. Massage also helps by improving circulation, which can re nourish damaged nerves with increased blood flow and by reducing stress levels, which can exacerbate pain sensations. Regular massage sessions can be a valuable component of the comprehensive treatment plan. Next, emotional and psychological support. Chronic pain and loss of function from peripheral neuropathy can lead to depression and anxiety. Professional counseling or therapy can provide strategies to cope with these challenges, improve mental health, and enhance the quality of life. Similarly, connecting with others who understand the experience of living with peripheral neuropathy can provide emotional support, practical tips, and a sense of community. Support groups, whether in person or online, offer a platform to share experiences and coping strategies. Next one is practical measures. For those with peripheral neuropathy, protecting the hands and feet from injury is crucial. Wearing protective footwear, like the sleeves I was telling you 
leg sleeves, and avoiding activities that may lead to cuts, bruises, and burns can prevent complications. Regular inspection of your feet for injuries is important, especially for individuals with diabetes. That's one thing I can't emphasize enough is that you need to make sure you check your feet regularly. To minimize the risk of falls and injuries, individuals with peripheral neuropathy should implement safety measures at home. This can include securing loose rugs, improving lighting, and installing grab bars in the bathroom and along the staircase. All right, next, access support resources. Accessing support resources for, for peripheral neuropathy can significantly help in managing the condition. There are several avenues where you can find support and resources. First one is Octa online support groups and forums. The Foundation for Peripheral Neuropathy provides a wealth of information and resources, including a directory of support groups, educational materials, and up-to-date on the latest research considering peripheral neuropathy. Similarly, the Neuropathy Action Foundation is dedicated to providing education, advocacy, and support for those affected by neuropathy. With a website that includes valuable information on symptoms, management, and calendar of events for webinars and support group meetings. The Health Unlocked Neuropathy Community is an engaging online forum where individuals affected by neuropathy can share their expressions, receive advice, and find support among others facing the similar challenges. Next is social media platforms. Many Facebook and Reddit groups exist where individuals with peripheral neuropathy share experiences and tips for management and other support within the majority, or I'm sorry, a moderated positive community environment. Next is national and local organizations. Neurological disorders and strokes provides Comprehensive information on peripheral neuropathy, including detailed descriptions of the condition, treatment options, online research studies, and clinical trials. Local hospitals and clinics often host patient education centers for support groups for individuals dealing with chronic conditions like peripheral neuropathy, offering a local in-person resource. Next is professional counseling services. Engaging with mental health professionals, we have experience dealing with chronic illness and can offer significant support in managing the emotional and physical logical impact of living with peripheral neuropathy. Next is healthcare providers. Your primary care physician or neurologist can be an excellent resource referrals to support groups, counseling services, or other community resources that can assist in managing peripheral neuropathy. And your takeaway of this whole talk I had here, peripheral neuropathy becomes more manageable when individuals embrace a comprehensive approach that includes medical treatments, lifestyle adjustments, and alternative therapies. Accessing support resources such as online communities and professional counseling plays a crucial role in providing emotional support and practical advice. Together, these strategies and resources empower those affected by peripheral neuropathy to lead a more comfortable and fulfilling life. Well, I hope along with that, um, posting I did of this article that I've read today for this episode. I hope you do get information that you never knew that you've got now that you can uh, go and get help and let your doctor know as much as you can about the issues you may have. And I've talked about that before in a couple episodes back on how to prepare to do that. It's very important you should follow those directions that are on there because that really helps you 
Because a lot of doctors don't want to hear those things. And if you go in there with a list, you know, they'll have to listen and take you serious. Because that's the one issue that people with pain don't, nobody ever believes us. So, that's it for this episode. If any of you get out there and get that opportunity to go to my website, Neuropathy Support Group and Podcast with Chris, that'd be great. On there, I have a lot of uh, advertisements for companies that are affiliate companies that support my um, my episodes. And I could really use your help if you can go back on those and see if there's something that you want to purchase from them. There's so many out there. So many companies I've posted. If you find something, go for it. All right. Well, that's it then. And I will see everybody next week. Bye. As we come to a close, it's my hope this podcast and other sources, such as product reviews that I have discussed today, can better our lives and give us some relief dealing with neuropathy. This episode plus others are posted every Monday on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. And finally, whatever life throws at you, even if it hurts you, just be strong and fight through it. Remember, strong walls shake, but never collapse. Talk to you next Monday.